back to Entertainment Weekly's coverage from Comic-Con. I'm Jessica Shaw, here with the creator, cast of The Orville. The show I am most excited for September 10th at 8 on Fox is the premiere. Welcome to Comic-Con. Is this so exciting to be here? Yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, the premise of the show, it's set a, you know, several hundred years in the future. It's the USS Orville. Um, Seth, you, you created the show and you played the captain. Uh, the captain who I, I wrote down is, the, uh, you're nobody's first choice. Right. That was one of the, we were lucky right. enough to see just on like a show. couple of, on the show, yeah. 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 Right. Everyone's yes. first yes. choice yes. here, on the show, nobody's first yes. choice. Yes, yes, which I'm sure you'll find a way to work into some negative review of my work like you always do, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine, that's fine, we love you. That's why we're here. No, it's, no, it's, um, it's, uh, yeah, this is, this, you know, this is a show that's kind of been percolating uh, in my head for a long time, and, uh, you know, I've always been a fan of the genre, and the mix of sci-fi and comedy is something that that kind of I think has has the t the time has come for people. Uh, the audience is there. I think with the success of things like Guardians of the Galaxy and Deadpool, um, people are kind of ready to embrace this kind of. Goldilocks zone of those two genres. Yes, even I, when I first saw it, I, th I thought Galaxy Quest, which is just one of my favorite movies, and I love that. And I, oh, I, honey, it's much better than that. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> of course. I okay. thought Galaxy Quest, and then I thought McFarlane's going to improve on that. Oh, and yeah. really, that yeah. was where I went. Um, well, tell us what we're going to see, because there's only been like a little bit of a teaser, and I'm very intrigued by it, because it's an hour-long show. Um, and I was kind of, at first I thought it was just going to be a 30 minute show, so I'm guessing there is there is um, maybe more of an exploration of relationships and stuff like that. So. It is, yeah. You know, this, you know, one of the things we, we re look, if, it were, if we were a half hour show, you could get away with joke, 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 and just, you know, you could be a sitcom. With an hour, there's an obligation to, and not just an obligation, it's a, it, it is a pleasure, actually, to be able to kind of expand on character relationships, to tell some stories that have a real arc. Um, that really have stakes that go somewhere and that's what we've set out to do we've really set out to um, draw people in in that way <clears throat> beyond the humor every week and we are an episodic show which in this day and age is oddly rare where it's like each week it's its own story mm -hmm. you know, it's the same characters every week but it has a beginning middle and end and you can watch episode two and episode five back to back and it's not like you're gonna have missed some key thread Right. That, uh, that you need to enjoy it. What did you all think when you read the script before you took these roles? Brilliant. Loved it. I loved it. Oh my that God. was one of the best scripts I've read in a while. Really? And completely original. It's not yeah. been done. And Adrian, you play uh, the captain's ex-wife, who's the first officer, and, and uh, mm. uh, ten his, his better half. Mm. His better mm. half. <laughs> ex better half. <laughs> ex better half. Everybody's first choice. Everybody's first choice. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, well, tell us about that relationship. Well, that's the thing. I mean, there's still love between these two people, and she, you know, she did something horrible ultimately, and, and they split, and now. Um, wait, what did she do? Well, you're gonna have to wait and teaser. find out. <laughs> okay, um, but now she's back, and he has to deal with it in like the most amazing situation of his life. He has kind of this dark thing come over him, but um, that's part of the, like the relationship. I think Seth was talking about. It's the heart that draws you through all of these these storylines. It's like yes, it could be you know procedural, but it's not. It's you know you really care about these characters, and you want to see. Will they or won't they? I mean, there's a little bit of a Ross Rachel thing happening here. So it's like, you know. And between all of the characters, there's so many different relationships. All the characters, there's a Ross Rachel thing going on? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> really don't know what's going to happen. Some crazy things happen on the ship, so. Um, I'm a little obsessed with the blob, the kind of gelatinous floor <laughs> blob, I, uh, voiced by Norm MacDonald. Yes. Um, I kind of need to hear more. How did you come up with that? Was the network like, yeah, to that's totally normal. Let's have a gelatinous floor blob that talks. <laughs> you know, it's 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 a sci-fi show, and, and you know, budgetary constraints always kind of mandate that sci-fi characters be humanoid. Which, you know, if you talk to astrophysicists and whatnot, they'll tell you like, look. Most likely, nothing will look anything like a human if we ever find life in space. It'll look mm -hmm. completely different. So it's nice to kind of populate this world with, you know, where where we can with things that are utterly non-human. And and you know, I'm I'm not sure that we've figured out a way to do a CGI character on a weekly basis in a way that fits within a TV budget. We're working on it. <laughs> um, but Norm is like, look, Norm McDonald to me has always been one of the funniest guys alive. And 
I, I, I couldn't really see anyone else doing that. So what's that phone call like? Are you like, hey, Norm? I, I went like full banana, like, hey, Norm. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's 1986, and I'm like, hey, Norm, do you want to play Blob? Yeah, yeah. Then he said, sure. <laughs> that was pretty much, it was like a 10 second phone call. And that was it. I love it. Deal maker. That's yeah. awesome. Uh, John Favreau directed your pilot. Oh, Tell yes. us about that. Awesome. Yeah. What a I was dream. A, I was a big yeah. fan of him just in general. So yeah. when I found out he was doing a pilot, it was just icing on the cake for the project and to be able to work with everybody here and this guy who I've known for a long time. Yeah, I, you know, I had to fight between you know, just doing the job and also just being a fan, you know, because everybody up here is like, oh, everybody's amazing. And I actually, outside of what I do, like what you do. So it's, you know, it's a perk of coming to work. And he really is an actor's director, too. I mean, he gets, yeah. you know, like yeah. his work. I mean, uh, the other day, like right before he started shooting, happenstantially, like Swingers were on, was on. And I was like, oh, man. And then you see him and like, this is the same guy in this body of work for all these years. But he gets up in there. And he's so kind. He's so gentle and so generous. And he, he's attentive and listens, you know. Um, and you just really want to do well. You really want to do well for him, with him, and it's a process and you feel like very collaborative and um, yeah, I mean, he just really knows what he's doing too and he's so easy, you know, and funny. And he DJ'd our rap party. He, he did? did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is he a good DJ? So, he's a great and DJ. He's very good. He's like, like, don't bother him. He's like, don't, don't talk to me. Like, in, he, you know. And by the way, he'll make a grilled cheese on the... Right. Whoa, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. So John Favreau's like yeah. directing. Everything. He's catering. Yes. Yes. He's DJing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so. And you have some other, you have like Jonathan Frakes, right? And, and yeah. Brandon Braga yes. directing too. Like, I love that there's, you've got like a theme going on sure. there. Got well, a lot of Johns. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, look, it's, it's th these, I mean, those, those people are all from an era of sci-fi where it was a little more aspirational. It was a little more positive. It was a little more fun, I think. I think we're kind of, I, I am Hunger Games out. I, I think if I see one more dystopian movie about how bad the future is going to be I'm just going to kill myself like it's just it's, it's, it's just it's just like enough and yeah. and I miss that stuff and 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 those people all come from that world where that was just what they did they just found ways to it's create a comfortable a, future yeah, yeah. like you want to live in the future yeah. mm -hmm. and even though we're we take place 400 years ahead of our time we still deal with all these problems that humanity has like relationships or social issues social yeah. issues yeah. Yeah. A and cultural, cultural yeah. like clashing, like people. Right. How do you how do you coexist with with a species that has a completely different value and belief right. system than you? And what what's the what's the what's the right and what's the right. middle ground? So mm -hmm. we're all you know these are all things that you know, which is great because every every episode um, there's always these real problems right. that will that are, that 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 we have to deal with, and there's humor that's laden in there. But it's the, I think that's what makes it um, gives it gravitas and weight is that. You know, there's some actual things that don't work out so well, like, right. like not happy endings and things like that. So, you know, I like that, you know, we don't... Um, there are aliens, but it's yeah. still very real. We do have <laughs> clowns in reality. But it's also, yeah. I think, it, it's an interesting... Um, it's an interesting needle to thread, you know, being really funny and also, like you yeah. said, just having, you know, or like Adrian, you said, like ha addressing social issues and stuff, which, you know, I imagine that there's a lot going on in, in uh, our present day planet Earth right now that I'm guessing uh, this is a commentary <laughs> on, yes. But the challenge of sci-fi is to actually come up with original ideas. So every week, these scripts come up with original ideas, which are fun, it's a whole new adventure, you know, that's a huge challenge, which like, Seth and the team have made it easy. Each episode's like a mini movie. Yeah, and it's also there's, there's a there's a casualization of sci-fi to me that no one ever does. That whenever I see it, I, I'm always it just sucks me right in. Mm -hmm. And and what that what I mean by that is you should be able to do a show with no but if your characters are set up right, you should be able to do a show that takes place in one room with just two or three of your characters on the ship and no space battles, no action, no nothing, and you should be able to sustain it just based on their relationships. And right. that to me is is when sci-fi does it right. And that's what we're trying to do. Um, tell me about Charlize Theron being on uh, that news came out and people were like, ah, going crazy. Is she? No, you guys leaked it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> My byline wasn't on it. You tell me what happened. Wow. <laughs> I think they should watch it. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, I, I, uh, you, you got that one. Scoop, get the rest of it. Oh, are there I'm more kidding. guest I'm stars? Uh, yeah. No, no, no. No, it's, no, it's uh, I, I can't tell you anything. 
I can I can tell you that she's in the show. Mm -hmm. and she's fantastic as mm -hmm. always. Mm -hmm. um, Was that another one of those like, hey, in ten seconds I'll be well, on it? Well, I had uh, you know I had worked with her on the western that I yeah. did and had the one of the best experiences of my life and 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 you know call and ask her to do the show and you know Charlie Char Char is awesome. She's the best and she she astonishingly said yes and yes I'll come do your little TV show. <laughs> 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 um, and she was great. She was fantastic. I can't tell you anything about who she plays. It's all surprise. Oh, you've told us just, plenty. Oh, have I now? Oh, okay. <laughs> you've told us plenty. And uh, you guys are on like after football, so clearly <laughs> that must feel good. No, seriously. It's the best night of television. Yeah. yeah. You have this massive lead in, so it just must be like, it must feel good that they clearly like the network is into, I mean. That's my night of TV. I mean, right? I watched yeah. football and then yeah, watched the show. Yes. Even if I wasn't in the show, that would be like, the, yeah, because by that time I'm sufficiently like, you know, imbibed and I'm ready to go, you know, and I'm like hyped up for <laughs> football so and you're I go to space. People should watch the show drunk, is that what you're saying? Absolutely. <laughs> is that what you just said? That's what I think that's what it never said. hurts it to, do, any to do anything with a little alcohol in it. You, you know, know, exactly. Listen, true words have never been spoken. <laughs> the Orville premieres Sunday, September what? 10th on yeah. 8th. So excited for the show. Thank you guys. Thank so you. Thank you.